how I got my start. I'm just a brother from Harlem with a high school education. I entered the industry in New York City in 1961. When I finished school in 1962, I went directly into the industry. I went briefly to Fashion Institute of Technology only to realize that my skill level had surpassed what they could teach me. So at that particular time, I went directly into the industry. I bounced around and got a lot of experience in the first two years after I got out of high school. And then I came upon a job that would change my life forever. This is a job that I got on 125th Street in Hall back in 1964. I had no idea of what I was getting into at the time. Because I knew Harlem. I was raised in Harlem. I just knew Harlem. But I had no idea of how it would be working in Harlem. Yet the Apollo Theater, which was on Harlem, which was the heartbeat of Harlem, that was the pulse of everything that happened in Harlem. And I looked up upon, no, I didn't look up upon it. I was blessed to get a job working for a gentleman named Ori Walls at Ori's Custom Tailoring. He was four doors down from the Apollo Theater. That was the shaping of my life because he made clothes for 80% of the entertainers that performed at the Apollo Theater. He made clothes for ball players and Athletes that were of notable standing. He made clothes for civil rights people. He was called at one time Mr. 125th Street. He was a genius of a man and a brilliant business person. He didn't teach me tailoring. He taught me how to run a business. And because of the knowledge that I gained from him, it shaped and molded what is now called Gentleman Jim. I have endless blessings that I have praised him with. He's made his transition now, but I'll never forget the way he treated me. He treated me like his son, and I looked up to him like a father. He was a father figure to me. And I watched him maneuver in a world that was very closed door to us at the particular time. I think it's bouncing back and forth, honey. Hmm? It went on thing I'm saying it, it goes and then it stops, it pauses. You got a lot of bars. They just might be the way it's recording. Oh, okay. At that particular time, the clientele that we had included like I said, included 80% of the Apollo acts. And I'm talking about acts that included everybody from Duke Ellington through James Brown. We made clothes for the late and great Jackie Robinson after his retirement. We made clothes for A. Philip Randolph, the gentleman who founded the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. And we did a few things for Byron Ruskin, who was um, Martin Luther King's right, one of his right-hand lieutenants back in the great civil rights days. We made clothes also for, if you want to say, the underworld. And by that I mean we made clothes for all the gangsters that also frequented 125th Street near Apollo Theater. And I'm talking about real gangsters. I'm talking about everything from dope dealers to number writers, from pimps and prostitution to crooked cops and good cops. We made clothes for professional thieves, people that stole items. And we also made clothes for the common man. 
except our clientele base when it came to the average person was only about 5%. So that meant 95% of our clients didn't have what we would call a regular job. In this, Ori Walls was one of the greatest men that I've ever met in my life. He was a humanitarian in so many words because he helped everybody. And he allowed some of these great entertainers to take advantage of him uh, numerically by not paying for their clothes but coming back for more and never paying off their old bills. But he believed in keeping the dollar in circulation. So even though they owed him, he allowed them to reorder, pay some more money in, never squaring up the old bill. And, you know, to me it was a shame because we did great work back then. We also created looks that the clothing industry is now still using. Ori Walls was a, a man of character because to see him, like myself, he was so polished and so poised with his look and his mannerism and his diction and grammar. Everything was as if he was the best of the best in either corporate America or academic. He could carry himself as a college professor and could mix and mingle in the crowds that we do tend to pretend that we're part of. Ori Walls came along and had a lot of tragedies in his family, but you would never know it. I was blessed to have been personally involved with him for the length of time to see some of the strain that he went through and with that it was it was not an easy sight nor was it a pleasurable sight. He and I lived through the riots in Harlem, we lived through the blackout, guarding the store that was his but it was mine because it was my livelihood. So if something was happening I stayed right there with him side by side making sure that nobody destroyed both his business but my livelihood. I can't thank him enough for the way he taught me how to handle the clientele and the, the people of the world when it came to transacting business. I just can't thank him enough. I'll get further into his life as we go along. Sounds wonderful. Good deal. It's a great way to